They called him the Man of Athens, but he was no Athenian. He was born in pure-blooded Roman family, but was of the common people. He was a wealthy man, but also an Epicurean of humble nature. He stayed out of politics, but the very highest in Rome would always seek his counsel and his company. In all, Titus Pomponius Atticus was an exceptional man of exceptional paradox. And this video is a quick look at this famous figure who straddled the Greco-Roman divide and navigated the tumultuous transition from republic to empire so skillfully that he gains nearly no enemies at all, despite being known to every major politician and military figure at the time, a feat very few others could claim. Atticus was a talented child born in Rome, and his father was quick to nurture his intellect. He distinguished himself in his early classes, in Quiritia nobilis inter requales ferebatur, clariusque explendescebat, quam generosi condiscipuli animo aequo ferre possent. In childhood, he far exceeded his peers, and his brilliance shone brightly. So much so, the aristocratic schoolmates could barely keep up. And so he was able to join the cohort of the most talented young lawyers under the great Quintus Mucius Scaevola, with another meteoric star of his generation, none other than Marcus Tullius Cicero, who would become his lifelong friend. When his father died, he inherited the family wealth, and this, with his intellect, gave him everything he needed to excel in life. He invested wisely and became a very wealthy banker. Now, I know it's easy to jump to conclusions when we hear the word banker, but as history would tell it, when someone, even the Republic itself, needed money, sempre se interposuit atque ita ut neque usuram umquam ab iesacque peret, neque longius quam dictum esset debre passus sit. He would always offer it, he would never accept interest, and would not let them be indebted to him longer than the agreed terms. In short, he was a fairly nice banker. But, as a prominent Roman citizen in a tumultuous period, he found himself in hot water through his own family connections when Lucius Cinna and Sulla went tete-a-tete -tete in a major power struggle. The silver lining, however, was that it gave him the perfect excuse to continue his studies in Athens. And so he went and assimilated so well there that he acquired his famous cognomen, Atticus. This was no surprise to anyone. Cicero even wrote that Ita enem se Athenis colocavit ut sit paine unus ex Atticus, ut it etiam coniomen vidiatur habiturus. He's established himself so well in Athens that he's practically an Athenian, and it's likely that he'll start bearing it soon. In Athens, Atticus started his own publishing company, training slaves as scribes. Lucian of Samosata described the books that he produced as Galle, beautiful, and Atticus himself as Ho aioidimos Atticos, sun epimeleia teipa sei egrapsan. Famous Atticus, who wrote with utmost care. During his long stay there, Atticus would ensure that the Athenians were fed from his very own treasury, and in return, they showered him with praise. The only reason he politely declined their offer to make him a citizen is that it would have meant giving up his Roman citizenship. But they built statues to him anyway, and always sought his advice, politically and philosophically. This reputation extended to the mightiest Romans too, and in his lifetime, his Athenian home would host Sulla, Caesar, Cicero, Pompey, Brutus, and many more. Atticus periodically did go back to Rome for major events and elections, but it wasn't until 65 BCE that he unfortunately left Athens for good. Cornelius Nepo writes that all of Athens attended him the day he left, and their sadness was signalled by their tears. Universa civitas Athenienium prosecuta est, ut lacrimis desideri futuri dolorum indicaret. But why did he leave? Well, in that year Cicero's son was born, and the orator was running for the office of consul, the highest in the Republic. Atticus's influence was still so great over even the highest-ranking Romans that Cicero wrote to him early that year. Adeorum voluntatem mihi conciliandum maximo te mihi usui fore video. To gain their favour, I know I'll really need you. So, coming to Rome, Atticus somehow managed to stay friends with everyone. He married Pilia, the granddaughter of the wealthiest man in Rome, Marcus Crassus, they had two children over the course of a happy marriage, a son with his own name, and a daughter, Attica. His Epicurean philosophy protected him from politics somewhat, as did his capable social graces. He was known to be quite neutral, though his support was still valued. He held banquets for Rome's elite, and they were unusual in that instead of music and dancing, they would exclusively be accompanied by literary recitals. 
surprisingly, we might think, they did go down quite well, because he tended to invite people who shared his tastes. And despite inheriting and enhancing a considerable fortune, he lived relatively frugally, a man who lived by his word as an Epicurean, to the point where it was said that he mendacium neque dicebat, never told a lie. He lived all through the turbulent years that saw Cicero killed, Caesar killed, the assassins of Caesar killed, pretty much everyone killed, until just Octavian and his right-hand man Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa were left in Rome. Admittedly, Atticus had departed Italy when the wars got very wild, but upon returning he was welcomed by Octavian. His daughter Attica even became the first wife of Agrippa, who had sought the friendship of Atticus and received it in turn. Agrippa is the subject of my last video and this underrated figure in the Empire at this time, and someone I'm really quite obsessed with at the moment, I would really urge you to watch it. Anyway, shilling my own videos aside, Atticus lived a healthy life for nearly 80 years before he fell ill of natural causes. Agrippa was said to have wept over his deathbed, but Atticus died on the last day of March in 32 BCE. Despite his Epicurean funeral, modest at his decree, Huge crowds of people turned up to pay their respects to this remarkable friend to all.